Jacques, if we can start, uh, just get Malcolm Marks out of the way, exactly how this happened, what, what is the situation with Malcolm and Jacques? Yeah. Yeah, Malcolm, uh, uh, how did it happen? It was, uh, it was a freak accident. Uh, he, his legs just got caught uh, between another player's legs. Um, it was a, wasn't a contact session. It was a bit of a team run where we had two opposing sides and we were painting pictures for each other. And yeah, it was just unfortunate. Uh, his leg got stuck between another player's leg. And I think, I, I'm not sure if the detail of the injury um, have not been, not, not, uh, yeah. So yeah, but it, it's serious in, in the fact that he, he's not available for the World Cup. How much of a Um, yeah, oh, yes. Sorry, I just dropped. Oh yeah, sorry. Uh, it's an accident on the knee of Malcolm. It's an accident on the terrain. It was just a training classic, without forcément de contact. It's an accident that happened like that. His leg was broken on the rock, and they don't have, for the moment, the details exact of the injury in particular. Um, yes, I think it's a blow on various levels, you know, um, I always start, I mean, I, like yesterday, I think the majority of our team were, when we left uh, Toulon to come to Bordeaux, I think we were all sad, you know, it's, and that's, that's probably the, the first loss, is the loss to a player, remember, rugby players work incredibly hard for four years to get to a World Cup, and they sacrifice a lot, their family sacrifice a lot, so, for him to miss out on it with such a freak accident, I think, is a big blow for him as an individual, as the person. And then secondly, uh, uh, for us as a team, uh, I think I'll, uh, I'll get to the rugby side of things. I think um, we've been on the road now, I think, probably 12 or 13 weeks that we've been together as a group. Uh, um, uh, and I want to say as a family, we, we, our families are with us. So the, the second blow is f every individual in our team adds something to the box, to the spring box, the environment, the, the team. You know, so we lose that with Malcolm. And a typical thing is in the mornings, I saw Malcolm very early with his daughters in, in his arms. So, so I'm going to miss that, uh, uh, the, the chats we had um, in the morning early. And then thirdly, uh, obviously, you, you lose a quality rugby player uh, um, as a team, uh, but also the World Rugby, uh, the, the World Cup loses a quality rugby player. So I think everybody, every fan, every uh, country wants to see the best players play in a World Cup. But, but we're not the first team that that has happened to. I mean, there's numerous uh, players, uh, world-class players that, from other teams that, that is go that, that's going to miss this World Cup. And I also think it's not the last guy that will uh, that with the World Cup will lose due to injury. It will. It it it's a contact sport and it will happen. Yeah. Okay. Uh, you get the you get the vibe. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, forcément, c'est un énorme, c'est un coup dur pour l'équipe. Uh, tout le monde était triste quand c'est arrivé. Uh, c'est pas qu'un joueur, c'est une personne importante dans le groupe. Uh, Jacques parlait de se, se rappelle que chaque matin. Euh, il voyait Malcolm aller voir sa, avec, arriver avec sa fille euh, le matin, donc c'est plus qu'un joueur, c'est une personne importante euh, du groupe. Euh, ça fait 12-13 semaines qu'ils sont ensemble, donc forcément c'est un coup dur de perdre euh, Malcolm. Euh, mais malheureusement, c'est pas que l'équipe qui perd euh, un joueur, c'est aussi toute la Coupe du Monde qui perd un joueur, euh, qui est un joueur important dans le rugby mondial. Et malheureusement, ça sera peut-être, il pense que c'est pas le seul. Euh, D'autres équipes ont déjà parlé des joueurs importants et c'est peut-être pas fini. Jacques, alors il y a un social media. Mais vous avez peut-être été aware du fait que le premier aspect de la vie est si vous voulez vous laisser les fiers de ce que vous avez dit, vous avez dit que vous avez dit que En termes d'injuries en général I think that's the one thing you can't control. You, the, the only thing you can control is to make sure that you build as much depth as possible. And we, we certainly tried that. Uh, if you think where we were maybe in 2021 after COVID. Um, uh, so we really tried hard to get as much depth uh, into our squad as possible uh, and to get experience into that depth. And that's hence the fact that we had so much rotation in 2022. Do you want to go, Boris? Yeah. Um... Donc forcément c'est quelque chose que les blessures c'est quelque chose qu'on ne peut pas contrôler. Euh, après le Covid euh, en 2021, 
c'est un des gros objectifs de construire beaucoup de profondeur d'effectifs. Euh, c'est pour ça qu'il y a eu autant de rotations en, à la sortie du Covid. Euh, L'objectif, c'est justement de créer de la qualité dans cette profondeur d'effectifs. And 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 I'll I'll latch on to that. <coughs> and I think the thing is when when players get injured, you can look at it from a the, the cup is half empty or half full. Um, and and we certainly look at it as from half full because if there wasn't injuries previously, uh, Malcolm wouldn't have been in the mix. So sometimes injury or loss of form get players the opportunity and then they become world stars, you know. So so we, we, we obviously, injuries is bad and it's sad, like I mentioned, firstly for the individual. But then it also creates opportunities for, for, for different players to step up and to get in. And, uh, and that's the reality we have and that's the reality we face and that's the cards we've been dealt with and we're more than comfortable to, to play with those cards. Uh, L'équipe décide de voir le verre à moitié plein uh, sur les blessures en prenant l'exemple de Malcolm qui, sans des blessures, ne serait jamais arrivé sur la scène internationale, enfin, ou pas aussitôt. Euh, donc, bien sûr, c'est triste pour le joueur et pour l'équipe de perdre un joueur, mais ça peut aussi créer des opportunités de, pour des joueurs qui vont devenir des joueurs de classe mondiale. Tu as Let me start like that. I think if you look at France, Uruguay. I think if you start, and, and for us, there's a 48 uh, peri hour period before you can get somebody in. So they, they, there's some administrative stuff which I know nothing about, which Charles and those guys will manage, um, uh, that will take place. And we decided when it happened, I mean, Malcolm wasn't in our team. Malcolm, so we had our team is settled and we've got a backup uh, third choice. If something will happen with those two, uh, we have a Marco van Staden that can stand in for now. And we will probably make a decision uh, over the weekend uh, after the game um, in terms of who we're going to bring in. Because I think if you take your eye off the ball, um, and I don't, I don't say France did, but I think last night you could see any team can, if you're not 100% on top of your game, and we start thinking about who we're going to bring in as a replacement hooker, and we start not fully focusing on Romania, uh, uh, it, it might become a slippery game. Euh, L'objectif reste le match de la Roumanie. Euh, ils ont encore un peu de temps pour euh, bien réfléchir à la décision de remplacer Malcolm. Euh, on a vu hier soir que si on ne se concentre pas à 100% sur un match, ça peut être compliqué. L'Uruguay a posé beaucoup de problèmes à la France. Donc là, ils sont à 100% concentrés sur la Roumanie. Et que de toute façon, dans la... ils ont déjà deux options au, au poste de talonneur. Et Marco peut être une option, euh, Marco Van Stan peut être une option également. Uh, uh, Jacques, will you uh, have a look at uh, the list of Tigers uh, say a warm-up game tonight? No, definitely. Yeah, uh, we, we will definitely have a look at uh, the, the Leicester game. I think Andre is in the mix. Uh, and as we would uh, with the other players, Lucano. Lucano is very close uh, to being ready. Um, uh, probably a week or two before he's ready and fit to play. And then, yeah, so all the, all the players that were injured, uh, that were on our ready uh, to play list, uh, as they return back uh, from, from injury, we will have a look at all of them, yeah. Is Lord ready as well? Who? Uh, no. Donc, Lord Jäger n'est pas encore prêt, mais par contre, pour ce qui est des autres joueurs, dont André qui joue avec André Collard, qui joue avec Leicester, ils vont surveiller et tous les joueurs qui justement reviennent de blessure, qui, étaient dans, qui sont dans la liste euh, étendue, euh, sont, ils, ils les regardent et ils surveillent le, leur retour à la compétition. When I, sorry, when I said Lourdes, no, I mean not in the next week or two. I think he's definitely better and returning to, to training, uh, but, but not, uh, I don't think, I think the other two are more ready, will be for, ready be, before him. Yeah. Donc André et Le Cagno sont plus proches d'un retour complet à la compétition et à 100% que l'Aude, pour qui ça devrait prendre encore une ou deux semaines. Yeah, I think you must always, uh, uh, how can I say, a third specialist position 
like let's say let's take uh, let let's not take hooker let's take fly off so we've got uh, uh Marnie and we've got Damien Willemse and our backup then is uh Faf who can cover another position i think if you have a third uh, 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 your third choice or your, your your backup backup player in a specialist position, and he can only play one position. I think that that takes almost the utility component of our squad out of the way. I'm not saying it should work in all teams like that, but in our team, it's always nice if your third specialist, like our nines, we've got four specialist nines here that can be utility players. For us, it works as a team, and the same thing why we went with Dion Fury and not with Joseph uh, uh, as a third choice uh, because Dion can cover multiple positions for us. So um, that's certainly something we will have into consideration. Uh, but like I say, we, when the injury happened, we said, listen, it didn't affect our team going into this match at all. So we will discuss it after the game's done. Uh, we, we fully focus on the Romania because I think uh, we should show them that respect. Um, and uh, it's only second time we've played them in a World Cup. So it's a special game for us. And um, we should also show that respect to the players that we selected uh, to go and play in that match. So we're not talking about anything other than Romania. Le focus reste le match de la Roumanie et c'est un signe de respect pour les joueurs qui ont été sélectionnés pour ce match. Um, pour ce qui est de la, la, la troisième joueur dans la hiérarchie en tant que sur des postes spécifiques, soit à l'honneur, mais on, on peut aussi prendre l'exemple de Demi d'ouverture où le numéro 1 est Mani et en numéro 2 Bémian. Euh, la troisième option est Fav qui couvre plusieurs postes justement dans, dans cette équipe euh, l'importance est accordée au, à la polyvalence euh, c'est pour ça que Dion euh, Fourie est, est, a été pris plutôt que Joseph Dewa parce qu'il couvre aussi le poste de troisième ligne donc même si euh, on pourrait penser qu'il faut prendre la première ligne à la place de la première ligne euh, ils accordent beaucoup d'importance à la polyvalence but in saying that, Joseph is fit, ready, he spent time with us um, right up to the, the All Black Test match and, and then he only departed. So it, it, it will be, uh, if we need a straight um, a hooker, full on just a, a guy that can play hooker for us, uh, Joseph will definitely be the next guy. Mais il faut prendre un talonneur, un talonneur qui ne joue que talonneur, Joseph est prêt uh, et c'est l'homme qui peut répondre à ce problème. Il a fait la préparation jusqu'au match de Black et il est prêt à jouer. Any further questions for Jean? Juste, est-ce que le match de hier soir entre la France et l'Uruguay leur a montré exactement ce qu'il ne faut pas faire dimanche contre la Roumanie? Did the last night's game show you exactly what not to do against a team like Romania? I, I can't talk um, for the, the French and what, they, uh, what their plan was, but what I can say is that um, we saw with Fiji, we saw with uh, Scotland in the warm-up games, we saw last night with Uruguay, um, I, I think, and that must probably be credit to World Rugby with all the effort that they've put into uh, the Tier 2 nations to get them to close that gap, which is, I think, it's awesome. Uh, I mean, you can't go... and. Uh, these days, and play a tier two nation, and expect. Listen, you're gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna have a, a have an easy game. I think if you do, you want to go first. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, on, il veut pas parler à la place de l'équipe de France, bien sûr, mais on l'a vu aussi avec les matchs de préparation contre les Fidji, contre l'Écosse, uh, et et là avec ce match contre le Uruguay. Uh, pour féliciter vos rugby pour le travail qu'ils ont fait pour développer justement ce rugby et ça rend. C'est génial parce que ça, euh, on ne peut plus aborder une équipe du tiers 2 en pensant que ça va être facile. I think if you look at, even at the, the, the Ireland Romania game, uh, I mean Romania took the early lead and then I think it was up to about, I can't remember, Bongi, maybe you can help me, at about 26 or 25 or 30 minutes, mm -hmm. 33 minutes, it was still like 19 8 or something like that. It was still. Uh, one score between the two uh, sides. Uh, it took, um, it took, uh, uh, I would say, it took Ireland up to 60 minutes uh, to to break down uh, Romania. So, um, you, uh, it, it, the tier two nations are not teams that you should take uh, lightly at all. Pas du tout prendre les équipes du tiers 2 à la légère, même en parlant du match Irlande-Roumanie. 
euh, la Roumanie a marqué en premier. Il a fallu au moins 25, 26 minutes euh, à l'Irlande pour que le score soit au-delà euh, d'un essai. C'est euh, bah, entre aux alentours de 19-8 et il a fallu du temps à l'Irlande pour justement euh, maîtriser euh, l'équipe adverse. But, sorry, but I'm not saying France did that, I'm talking about us, about the Springboks. I don't know what France, uh, I'm not saying they took them up lightly at all. Uh, I'm just saying, listen, we know that if you don't take them seriously, um, uh, uh, Romania, uh, you might, it might be a slippery game for us. Il veut pas du tout dire que la France les a pris à la légère. Il parle des Springboks qui ne vont pas du tout prendre à la légère ce match contre la Roumanie. Thank you. Good luck, Monkey. Au revoir. Okay, so that's what I'm going to do. Okay, obviously, you get in the box before. First time in the World Cup, talk to us about your feelings and your expectations for this game. Yeah, I think it will always remain a massive honor and privilege to be able to captain the Spring Box. Especially on the world stage, like a rugby World Cup, uh, it's uh, 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 still don't have words for it. Uh, but definitely um, a, a huge, a huge honor and, and, and responsibility for myself. Uh, but I know, like uh, being in a team like this, that's that's so experienced. Uh, I mean, like you have guys playing their third World Cup. You have like Veli and Dwayne playing their third World Cup. I mean, I mean, all that experience just makes my job easier on the day. So yeah, looking forward to the game. It's always a pleasure and a privilege to be captain of this team en particulier en période de Coupe du Monde. Donc c'est vraiment un honneur et une grosse responsabilité. Euh, mais il est bien entouré avec des joueurs qui disputent leur troisième Coupe du Monde, comme euh, Ville Leroux et Dwayne Vermeulen. Oh, okay, uh, 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 no, not at all. I think, uh, as Chris Jock said, it uh, was a really big, uh, a big blow for us as a team, but also not just on the field, but off the field. I mean, you're going to miss a character like Malcolm Marks, especially when him and kids are together. You know, they really brought a lot of um, uh, joy and a lot of uh, laughter to the team. And uh, yeah, I mean, I mean, I mean, also as a player, before, before you even get to the World Cup, I mean, you've been training so hard, working so hard for the last four years to make sure that you're ready and prepared for the World Cup, and then uh, freakish accidents happen like that. Uh, it's, always, uh, uh, it's always a major blow, and I mean, um, I'm hoping, I'm praying that uh, he has a speedy recovery and will definitely be missed in the team. And uh, yeah, I mean, uh, the other responsibility, uh, no, uh, uh, it's never been like that. Myself and Malcolm play two different style of games, but then we always know that you have to be aligned with the team. So we never play outside of the alignment of the team. We know that whatever we do, it's just for the Springbok jersey. It's not a responsibility supplementary now that Malcolm and the They have two styles of play. They apportent tous les deux different manière différente à l'équipe. Euh, mais bien sûr, c'est surtout un coup dur euh, de perdre le joueur, mais aussi de perdre la personne. Euh, ils ont passé énormément de temps à se préparer ensemble. Euh, et c'est une personne qui, qui apporte beaucoup de joie avec sa famille et de bonne humeur. Oui, il a yeah, I know <laughs> you actually answered the question. Uh, we've been together all along, um, uh, working in the same system, uh, being in all the linemen camps, they know exactly what is needed by them. And I mean, someone like Dion is actually has more experience than me, uh, older than me and more experience than me in rugby. Uh, but I mean, coming to, the, uh, coming to the, the, uh, this environment, this team, um, I do try to help him in any way that he needs. Uh, but I mean, I, I'm definitely sure that he has more, more experience playing hooker than myself. If, even though even though he's a specialized flank, but you know exactly what to do, exactly what is needed from him. And there's nothing about playing for the spring box. We keep things so simple that you know exactly what to do on the day. There's nothing special required from you. If you can just do your job on the day, then um, you you be you you you'll be doing your part for this team. Um, <laughs> Sorry, <Moses>. uh, <laughs> um, no, he he's prepared since the début de façon avec uh, Malcolm, uh, avec <coughs> avec Dion et Marco. Euh, il s'entraide euh, Dion a d'ailleurs beaucoup d'expérience et a peut-être plus de choses à, plus d'expérience en tant que talonneur que Bambi même s'il se spécialise en tant que mais ils travaillent toujours ensemble et le, 
le jeu des blocs est assez... Et la manière qu'ils ont approché le jeu est simple, et donc ils savent ce qu'ils doivent faire quand ils sont sur le terrain. Yeah, 100%, definitely a massive bonus. But I mean, uh, uh, when it comes to, to, to people, uh, to players that are good at that, uh, I'm I'm sure they're all around this team. Uh, we're guys like Marku, also does a very well. Uh, we have Dion, obviously does a very well. Uh, Dion, obviously does a very well. Uh, we have guys like Getty, also who, who can do a very good job. Uh, so yeah, very well. Uh, but I mean, uh, when it comes to people that are good at that, uh, I'm I'm sure they're all around this team. Uh, we have guys like Marku, also does a very well. Uh, Dion, obviously does a very well. Uh, we have guys like Getty, also who 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 can get a few steals for us. So uh, that shouldn't be a problem for us. But uh, yeah, I mean, um, uh, the character, the man himself. Uh, 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 Malcolm would definitely be most in the team. Yeah. Malcolm is connu pour euh, gratter beaucoup de ballons, mais justement uh, Dion aussi est un spécialiste dans ce domaine et on a des joueurs à tous les postes qui sont capables de gratter des ballons, que ce soit Marco, que ce soit Steven qui peut en, 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 en récupérer aussi beaucoup. Euh, mais bien sûr, c'est toujours, hein, c'est évidemment un gros coup dur de perdre le joueur et la personne. Yeah, and I think um, the thing about rugby, uh, it, is, it, it is a contact sport and uh, most injuries happen during the game, but then the most freakish and like, out of control um, injuries happen actually during training. Exactly what happened to someone like Malcolm and to myself also, my injury also happened during training. And um, yeah, uh, you, you know it is going to happen, but you never know when it's going to happen. So you just uh, you just try and, and do your job to your best of your ability, enjoy rugby, Uh, make all the memories that you can, and yeah, when it's uh, when the time comes for injury, it does happen. Uh, and the awesome thing about the human body is that it knows exactly uh, how to heal itself, when to heal itself. So I think uh, uh, Malcolm will just trust the process, and uh, yeah, I, I'm sure he'll be, he'll be back sooner than later. Le rugby reste un sport de contact. Oui, la majorité des, euh, des blessures arrivent euh, pendant les matchs, mais euh, les blessures les plus accidentelles arrivent à l'entraînement. Euh, celle de Bongui aussi, est aussi arrivée euh, à l'entraînement. Euh, mais on sait qu'une blessure va arriver, on ne sait juste pas quand. Euh, donc il faut en profiter un maximum sur le terrain. Et c'est la beauté du corps humain qui, qui sait comment se soigner. Et on espère que Malcolm se guérira très vite. Uh, can you tell me a little bit more about uh, Dion because we, we know him quite well in France, he's played a few years in top 14 and, and for the deux. But um, he had a kind of strange story being a springbok at 34 or 35, uh, which is quite old. And um, being so, this versatility is quite rare as well. So were you surprised to see him uh, arriving in the mix? And uh, how will he establish himself uh, as a proper spring Oh, no, um, uh, I'm not all surprised uh, that Dion got, uh, got caught up in spring ball mix and obviously made the Rugby World Cup squad. And now, uh, this weekend, um, he, he's on the bench as hooker. And I mean, if you follow Dion's career, uh, he has played hooker before for the Stormers for quite a long time. I think a couple of seasons for the Stormers. And he's been around, I mean, uh, Uh, you say that 34 is old, but then Dion doesn't make look. Uh, Dion makes 34 uh, looks very young. The way he's playing for the Stormers now at flank also, and I mean, he's got world experience. Uh, he's played in France before, so yeah, we'll we'll, we'll definitely we'll definitely be tapping into the experience. And uh, and I mean, for also, also for me, um, uh, for myself and Malcolm, we also learned a lot from uh, from Dion experience in, in France and experience uh, in all the rugby games that he's played. So yeah, he's going to play a massive role uh, this coming weekend. Non, je ne suis pas du tout surpris euh, que Dion ait intégré les Springboks. Euh, euh, sur le terrain, il a l'air toujours jeune quand il joue. Euh, il a une, une expérience énorme euh, d'avoir joué plusieurs saisons aux Stormers en tant que talonneur, d'avoir joué en France, qui a un bonus euh, pendant cette Coupe du Monde. Euh, il aura, Dion euh, leur a appris beaucoup euh, euh, en tant que, sur le rugby. Um, last Often, this question comes up different players. Um, Vincent Brock told me that 
basically which is this freakish big bowls to get pollinated before they do fewer properly. Do you have a favorite that go to uh in preparation for that? Uh, my go to me is always always also being spaghetti bolognese. But I don't think not a man that Vincent <laughs> eats <laughs> before the before the game, so you did yeah. see pe- people take pictures of the pile of food <laughs> Yeah, that's just for our little band to beat. Thank you guys. Thank you. Uh,